So we talked about this a little bit. So what if a major city lost its network for email, law enforcement records, payroll, or personal records for a week or more? Would that be bad, right? Um, and so, you know, email, so we can't communicate, that's, eh, that's not that big a deal. Law enforcement records, that's huge. Um, so say, you know, I don't know if you guys ever got speeding tickets or anything like that, but they can't look up your information. That'd be bad, especially if you forgot, like, your driver's license. They can't really, you know, figure out who you, if you say you are, who you say you are. Or, um, I mean, people with restraining orders, when the cop goes to say, hey, you know, just so-and-so does a check on somebody's driver's license and they don't see that there's somebody's got a restraining order against somebody else because their network's down, that could be bad. Things like that. Um, payroll, we all like to get paid, yes. So that, obviously, there's a huge monetary hit there. And then personal records, we don't want, not only do we not want our personal records lost, we don't want them stolen either because we don't want people to be able to get our identities. Um, what if the sewage system for a major city was compromised? So basically you got spills of raw sewage into rivers, parks, businesses, and homes. Uh, this is a huge environmental impact on wildlife and obviously the smell would be bad. And um, cleanup would be a bit of a pain. Um, what if the railroad service was stopped? So, you know, no more freight or passenger things going around. Um, for a day or more in multiple states. So basically, I mean, how many things go by rail from place to place? I mean, I don't really travel personally by rail, but I'm sure there are things that I use that travel by rail all the time, produce and stuff like that. Um, what if an electrical grid was compromised? So basically we lost power in whole cities or towns. Um, so no traffic signals or alarms. That's a big, you know, deadlock going on. Um, so that's almost like, I mean, have you guys seen the latest Die Hard movie? They have that thing called the fire sale. That's similar to that. Um, the nuclear. What if a nuclear power plant was compromised? So you could steal nuclear material. That's bad, obviously. Um, you could affect safety measures, cause a meltdown. Meltdowns are a big boom. That's obviously bad for everybody. And so this is the the wow. It really did happen thing. Um, each of those what ifs has happened in the past. Not to freak anyone out. Basically, each of those things has happened sometime in the past where. You know, somebody hacked into a system and caused a sewage dump to be in a river or a water supply or shut down a nuclear power plant or, you know, an electrical grid, something like that. So each of those things has happened in the past and is documented and you can see, uh, you can read through each of these links. Um, we're not going to go through each one of them because that would take a little bit too much time, but we'll give you some, you know, some of this later that you can look through if you like. Um, and I mean, these are, these are, a lot of these are uh, not too new. We see 2000 is the earliest, 2010 is pretty good. So this is the 2010, that mystery surrounds cyber missile that crippled Iran's nuclear weapons ambition. That was Stuxnet. You guys remember hearing about Stuxnet? Which was actually a really interesting uh, virus. It could, or worm, actually. It basically disassembled itself, got onto their thumb drives. They brought it into the system on their thumb drives, plugged it in, and it reassembled itself when it got in there. And then once it was fully intact, it attacked things in such a way that they couldn't see what was going on. And it affected their uranium production in such a way that it was just just barely not usable. And so that was, I mean, one of those cases where, you know, whether or not you agree with the application, it was basically a, a cyber attack on something in their infrastructure. And so if someone could do something similar to, to, to them, they can do something similar to us, obviously. And so that's, that's the sort of the, you know, the wow factor of all this. So, the, you know, this is why we need to study these things, and this is why we need to have you know, students who are, are learning these things as early as possible so that when they grow up, they can sort of be the cyber defenders for us. That's, that's, the, uh, that's the what if here. So who, what is at risk? We talked about this a little bit. Uh, it's basically the big takeaway is that, that red at the bottom. Anyone who's connected to anyone else is at risk. I mean, if your computer is plugged in, you're at risk. That's, that's the way it is. And ultimately, you know, we had that, that equation for threat. It was sort of, you know, your impact times, you know, your vulnerability times your risk. A lot of us, you know, what's the biggest risk that could happen to me? Somebody steals my identity. Yeah, it sucks. There are ways to get around it so that, you know, I can get my identity back. Um, I'd rather it not happen, but that's not that big a deal in the grand scheme of things. Um, so the government is, has, has more, obviously more of a risk, right, because they don't want, you know, entire infrastructure to be taken down. And that's not just our government. It's any government. And so businesses and corporations have high risk as well because they don't want to lose corporate records or, you know, corporate espionage, things like that happen. So... Anyone that's connected is at risk, but you know, obviously some people have higher risk than others.